Looks like some new information has dropped in regards to Diddy's condition in this New York City jail. Shout out to Law and Crime for dropping this new video. We're going to be reacting to see what is the new details. The eight new details of Diddy's life inside violent New York City jail. That is the video. What a title. <laughs> anyway, let's get into it. Let's see what they have for us in store. P. Diddy makes a third attempt to be released on bail, and this time it could actually happen. A new U.S. Wow, a strong way to start a video. <laughs> Get everybody going like, wait a minute. <laughs> District court judge has been appointed to the case, and now it's going to be up to him whether Diddy is released. Meanwhile, he's still behind bars in a... I don't think they will. Brooklyn jail that, according to his attorney, has deplorable conditions. We're taking a closer look at Diddy's day-to-day -day life incarcerated and his road to a possible release with attorney Randy Kessler. I'm Sierra Gillespie, and this is Law & Crime News. 54-year-old Sean P. Diddy Combs is... It's crazy that now he went from... I mean, everyone called him P. Diddy and Puff Daddy and all that, but now everyone uses his full name of, like, Sean Diddy... Uh, Sean, Sean P. Diddy Combs, or Sean Diddy Combs, like crazy crazy what, what what crime will will do to you he's entering his fourth week behind bars being held at the metropolitan detention center in brooklyn it's a far cry from his lavish life and mansions in miami and los angeles but jeez but ironically it was the evidence collected at those mansions that put diddy in jail in the first place back in march federal investigators raided diddy's homes in florida and california collecting evidence in the federal case against him. We now Which, by the way, I don't know if this could say pe federal agent or special agent. It was Homeland Security was also there. Homeland Security doesn't come to your door unless you really effed up, right? <laughs> like, you really absolutely did something wrong or, you know, or you did some crime. There's a reason why Homeland Security don't just go after everyday random people. But what's even wilder that uh, still we don't know because the trial hasn't started is how much of that evidence is going to be used in future crimes or future cra cases. How much, how much, how much, how much? Because we, we know there's a list in the same way there was an Ep Epstein flight logs, right? We know there's a list. Let's see if the, the media will, will cover it up better idea about what investigators were collecting, including multiple AR-15 rifles with the serial numbers removed, a drum magazine, and illegal drugs. But Diddy doesn't face any charges for possession of those items. Instead, it was the electronic evidence that led to Diddy's charges. On September 16th, he was in- I find that extremely strange. I mean, maybe it's because they only- the warrant that they- went in for was for those electronic uh, devices maybe i'm not a lawyer but what i'm assuming is because they had a warrant specifically for that that's all they can charge him for at least i i don't know someone who knows law better than me please let, explain what what happens in the comments below indicted by a federal grand jury on charges of racketeering conspiracy sex trafficking by force fraud or coercion and transportation to engage in prostitution a main topic discussed in this indictment was freak offs, freak -offs. described as elaborate produced sex performances <laughs> that combs arranged directed masturbated during and often electronically recorded and the gov so, so if you don't know what that means he's a cook well actually no not even i mean he was technically but um he just like i guess uh he like prawn up close and personal i guess he just has like a weird thing about that i guess i don't think it's weird i guess i don't know government alleges these freak offs were not consensual the indictment lays out a pattern of abuse that diddy would often follow drugging or forcing the victims to drink alcohol that was oftentimes laced with something Sex the diddy potions that's what the, is that what they are the diddy potions you know what's wild? What? How much of this was him? And how much of this was Bill Cosby? Yes. <laughs> Why is there so many similarity, similarities here? What's going on? 
sexually assaulting these victims and then forcing them to have sex with a prostitute. Now, the feds say they have evidence of these freak offs because Diddy often recorded them. Investigators apparently. And remember, people people were like, why would he record? Why would he record? I think he was using that as blackmail to blackmail other people. We have dozens of freak off videos and collected more than 100 cell phones, laptops, cloud storage accounts and storage devices. They allege Diddy used the sensitive, embarrassing and incriminating recordings that he made during the freak offs as collateral to ensure the continued obedience and silence of the victims. So Which is weird because it's like. At least nowadays, this is just my opinion. Nowadays, if a sex tape were to leak about somebody, it's not actually not the end of the world. If anything, people do it, create those things with the hopes that they leak because they know that it's going to be, it's going to make them popular. It's going to propel them into a stardom. Like, look at the, the whole, the whole reason why Kardashians, uh, well, actually not the whole reason, but they already had money. But the reason why they entered the public sphere in a way that they did was because of the sex tape. I don't know. I don't know. It, it, uh, maybe I'm the one that's it's, it's been on the internet too long and says, you know, people forgive a lot of things. But I, I just don't think a sex tape is at the end of the world. And then if it's like, well, if he's using it because it's like a crime that you're committing, well, he's the one that has it. So if anything... If it were to leak, it would only create a situation where people are looking into it that would end up leading to P. Diddy. I don't know. It just doesn't seem. Sorry, I'm, I'm scratching my ears. Um, it just doesn't seem like there has to be something more. Is basically I, that's all I'm saying. It's that's just not a strong enough. Unless the things that they were doing were just straight up some some evil shit which i guess the whole situation is pretty evil but there's just and like I, i'm a, this is it with the context again of the like if you were to just leak it people would just assume it's just a sex tape right and i'm not talking about the the context of now i'm talking about the if you were to release it back in the day when no one really knew what he was doing i just think there has to be more to it there has to be more that he was leveraging, much more. So these same recordings that were once used to keep victims quiet are now being used to prosecute Diddy in a sex trafficking scheme that goes back decades. The allegations against Diddy go back a while too, with survivors reporting abuse as far back as 1991. La and the, and that's what I'm saying. Like if a, a tape like that came out in 91, I feel like this would have given away exactly what he was doing. Last November, Cassandra Ventura, Diddy's ex, filed civil suit against him, citing years of emotional, physical... And that's exactly what happened with the hotel video. So that's why I just... Maybe when you're in that position, you can't really see it. But I feel like he must have been doing something else to really silence these people. And maybe they have... like the, the we, have, we have to wait till the trial to really know what that was. But it just seems... I don't know. Maybe that's just, like I. Maybe I'm just not understanding what it like, what it's like to be like that, like in that situation. But I, I, I just feel like there's something more. And sexual abuse during their relationship. Cassie mentioned the freak offs, saying Diddy recorded them and used them to keep her quiet. After that, a dozen more civil suits were filed against Diddy, and they all followed the same pattern alleging he drugged the victims, assaulted them, and recorded it. These lawsuits paved the way for Diddy's indictment and arrest, and there's actually more on the way. Weeks after Diddy's arrest, Houston based... That's... It's... It's wild. It's wild that he had... By the way, I think it's like 11 or 12 by this point. Um, it's just... Uh, uh, it's insane that there was that many and p p cases, like cases that he was settling on, multiple settlements. Like he didn't fight them and then win. That's what people need to understand. He was settling these things. And when you settle, it's either because the person who's making these claims want to get out of it, like get out of that situation of like, okay, maybe I take it back. Or did he actually did something wrong and was paying him out? So. I'm just saying these ladies walked away with a check and he ended up paying. So it's just wild that this all continued for so long.
Ice Attorney Tony Busby revealed he's planning to file 120 new civil lawsuits against Diddy with even more shocking allegations. Oh, man. The le how is this going to affect the legacy of LeBron James and Bronny James now? Who knows? Because I'm going to be honest. I legit think LeBron James of the Los Angeles Lakers was at these freak offs. These lawsuits will apparently include allegations of child sex abuse, too. In one case, a kid as young as nine years old. The lawsuits are also expected to reveal at least one high profile name that was involved in Diddy's scheme and participated in the freak offs. But for now, Diddy remains the only one charged in the case, and that's what led him to NBC in Brooklyn. If you're watching this video, you're a fan of law and crime. And I yep, we're always a fan of law and crime, so if you don't subscribe to them, you should. The link to the original video is in the description. Like always, I know that means you're all go-getters. Some of you may even be starting your own business or a new side hustle. That's why I want to talk to you about our amazing sponsor, Odoo. It's a free all-in-one business management software that provides you with a range of Odoo. That help with the day While they're talking about it and their so their um their sponsors getting their money's worth, let's talk about where where do we see this case going? I honestly think this is going to be a quick and simple one. But I just think Oh, shoot. I just think that they're going to be it's going to be a weird situation where like like I I think well obviously the jury shouldn't already know what the verdict's going to be, obviously. But I realistically think that it's going to be a quick and easy case because of the video evidence. And I don't expect this to be a very long, I, I, like, again, I just don't think it's going to be a long case, but the details that they will share are going to be super, super crazy. I also think that the longer it goes, like I, content wise will be better because then we get more details. So I'm, I guess I'm saying all this because I'm hoping it's not short because if it's short, then we don't get to learn as much about what was actually going on as the general public. I mean, we as a like a journalist can file a Freedom of Information Act and get as much as they can. But I think with something like this, the public deserves to know as much as humanly possible because of what happened with Jeffrey Epstein. There was so much information that we knew about but then when it came down to like some of the nitty gritty things, like who was there, who was on this list, who was actually flying back and forth, we never got that. Why? Because they were protecting very powerful people when it's like, we, I mean, if you have the proof, just get rid of them. Um, but, you know, Jeffrey is dead, but Gladys, uh, Gl Gl right? It's Gladys Maxwell. She's in prison. I, I just think we, we can't have another situation like that. I don't think anything bad will happen to Diddy. I just think that we can't have a situation where as soon as the case is over, all the information is locked up and we can't see it. Because it's just, this is too, this is another big situation where the public deserves. Requested bail. His legal team offered a pretty sizable bail package too, saying that Diddy would put up $50 million for his release. Jesus the Christ. Signed by Diddy, his sister, his mom, his three adult sons, and the mothers of two of his children. The defense also suggested Diddy would have major restrictions on travel, a GPS monitor, and even limitations on female visitors. This was presented to Judge Andrew L. Carter, who denied Diddy's bid for release. He argued the bail package was insufficient to guarantee the safety of the community or to maintain the integrity of the case. And so what he means by that, if you're not understanding, and this is kind of why a lot of people are claiming the race card on this for some reason. Um, they're like, oh, well, if he was any other race, they would have gave him bail. No, 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 no. The reason why they're not letting him go, because again, this is a, an African-American judge. <laughs> Right. <laughs> so you can't claim racism on him. Right. That's that's fucked up. Uh, is. Or a black judge, whoever you want to describe it, like whoever, however you want to use the whatever term you want to use. The the issue is. 
P. Diddy is notoriously known for messing with people and blackmailing people. Why would you want him out and about when he can tamper with witnesses? Especially if you can really, really bring in some very powerful people to witness and testify against him. It's just too much of a... Like, even if you he didn't end up doing that, it's too much of a liability that could cost this case. Because what if, what if, right? Knock on wood. He were to go out on bail, right? What 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 happens if all suddenly all these these witnesses die, got killed, right? What if all these people that were supposed to testify to them suddenly die and they can't prove it on P Diddy and now he gets off with the lighter sentence that he t- would have had otherwise? He's going to jail. Uh, in case you are wondering, he will be in prison, but it's a matter of how long. Because they have video evidence. I mean, you can't get out of that. Before that, Magistrate Judge Robin Tarnofsky also denied Diddy bail, highlighting his apparent anger issues and history of substance abuse. She and, and anger issues, what he means by is assaulting other women, like women. But also, he doesn't fight men, in case you're wondering. He also voiced concern about a danger to the community or witness tampering should Diddy yes. be released. But just this week, Judge Arun Subramanian was assigned to Diddy's case. Subramanian was nominated by President Joe Biden in 2022 and took the... Oh, we're cooked. This case is cooked. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely he's getting off. He's going to get bail. Bench in 2023. <laughs> Before that, he was a law clerk for Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Subramanian's no stranger to high profile cases either. He's also overseeing the Department of Justice antitrust case against Ticketmaster. That's the case where the government alleges Ticketmaster has an unlawful monopoly. Oh, Ticketmaster's awful. Like, uh, so let's say, let's say a venue you want to go to uh, up the road, like around your block, is selling tickets for, I don't know, 20 bucks. For a show of just like so whoever. What Ticketmaster will do is buy all these tickets and then sell them. And they'll sell them for like $40, $50. Or they will be like the only app that people can buy things on. Then they'll drive up the price that way. There's so many different things that they do that is kind of stupid. And then they also for some reason don't offer refunds uh, for a long. They didn't offer refunds for a long time. Which is kind of stupid. Because it's like, if I didn't use a ticket, why would you keep my money? ...on the market. That really came to light after the site crashed in 2022 when Taylor Swift fans rushed to get concert tickets. But back to P. Diddy. His team will make a third bid for release, this time to Judge Subramanian. In the meantime, he's still behind bars at MDC Brooklyn. And according to Diddy's legal team, the jail is notoriously dangerous and run down. Diddy's attorney, Mark Agnipolo, argues there are major issues with the jail, citing violence, poor conditions, overcrowding, and even staffing issues. He also cited... So you're, t- so you're saying all this so that we can put him in a stricter, harder jail. Right. <laughs> is that what you're saying? Because I feel like that's going to backfire. Like, it's not like a, a, oh, a pity case, woe is me type thing. It feels like it feels more like a please don't. This is terrible. This is awful conditions. You can't do anything. Give us bail. But it's like, okay, no, you know what? We'll probably put you in a bigger, more maximum security type prison instead. That's technically far worse because it has worse criminals. Some startling statistics. Two inmates have been killed at MDC since June, and at least four inmates have died by suicide over the past three years. On top of that, six staff members have been charged with crimes over the past five years. Six out of the... Okay, yeah, that's a little much. That's like one every year, basically. That's that's actually really bad. I know I was saying something like jokingly, but I think that's actually not good for a prison. But... I don't know what other prisons are like comparatively, but that's really bad. If you're having like some serious ethical issues with your employees every year, like one major one major incident every year, that's kind of that's kind of that's kind of bad. That's actually really awful. That's not good. Not for the prisoners, but for 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 
for these guys. They might break out. Half of these people might be able to escape. Who knows? When Diddy was first arrested, he was placed on suicide watch, which according to the DOJ's National Institute of Corrections is, quote, supervisory precautions taken for suicidal inmates that require frequent observation. Diddy's since been taken off suicide watch, but is still being housed in a protective care unit. Actually, the same one as Sam Bankman Freed. Bankman oh, so they're both getting special treatment. So, which this guy is probably going to get out soon. Even though he has all this time he's still got to do, they're probably going to get him out. Freed was convicted of fraud and money laundering last November after the collapse of his cryptocurrency exchange, FTX. They're both in a separate section of MDC. That's a unit for inmates who require special protection. That's people like Diddy or Bankman Freed who are high profile inmates, but it also cares for other inmates who need protection as they assist in ongoing investigations in open cases. Now, according to some reports, Diddy has a few privileges that other inmates lack. Including Called the key to the city, baby. Isn't it crazy that these, this city of New York gave him the key to the city? They're a bunch of Diddy lovers. New York, what have you done? <laughs> what have you done? What have you done? Including access to daily showers and slightly better food. In his nearly month-long stay at MDC, Diddy has had phone conversations with his children and even an in-person visit from his family. To take a deeper dive into Diddy's life behind bars and the likelihood that he'll soon be released, we're sitting down with attorney Randy Kessler. I mean, he... Oh, this part's either going to make me really mad. Yeah, it's probably going to make me mad if he says there's... I, I just think he's going to... Uh, I don't want to... Uh, let's just watch. Diddy has been in the spotlight for decades. He's obviously got a pretty big bank account living in mansions in multiple cities, and that's what he's used to. And all of a sudden, he's in a prison that's being described as deplorable. I mean, just that unto itself. Is that a major change? Of course. You know, the bigger they come, the harder they fall. And I sort of think... The bigger they actually come... Massive cum. Twice the twice the number of cum. It's better to come in the sink than sink in the cum. Sorry. Just because it's P. Diddy, it's just really when he says cum. Sorry. Right. That's what the purient interest of the public is. You know, jail is terrible for anybody. But for someone who's used to having people wait on them hand and foot and can and never stands in line and always, you know, gets front row and gets the best table and gets to have the exact opposite. What a life-changing moment. I mean, it's just incredible. And, you know, it brings into context our whole system of innocent till proven guilty. Why is he not being given bond? And, you know, we could debate that. He has a point. He does have a point. But in the fairness, this is different. Like, it's, he has a point if this was regular police. But this was, like, Homeland Security. This was the feds. This is different. Right. If they were like, if they really wanted this man to be behind bars, they could have done it. So the fact that he even, I mean, they did, but the fact that they did it at the time that they did tells you that they're trying to do everything by the book. That all day long of all people that's unlikely to flee or get away. Well, he's got the resources to flee, but he's so recognizable. And isn't he innocent until proven guilty? Well, yeah, but, you know, we have to recognize there are degrees of innocent to proven guilty. When yeah. This much evidence and so much stuff out there. Does that affect the judge's decision whether to grant bond or not? You can't think as a human being, the judge isn't thinking that some people are more likely to be guilty than others. And I think that's a great point. I think people need to realize this is what's weird about this whole P. Diddy case is obviously it's just a reflection of social media. And I'm sure a vast majority of people don't aren't like defending him but there's a lot of people right now who from all different types of backgrounds and ethnic uh, culture like ethnicities and cultures that are defending him but it's either like and it, it's they're defending him for one because they felt that he was unjustly denied bond and they think that's like a reflection of the whole system they're saying it's a race issue they're saying it's a, a variety of reasons but that's what, that, and I say all that because I want people to realize it's not like they don't, they have video evidence on this guy, right? If they didn't have that and there wasn't that video evidence of him beating his ex-wife, this would be a different story. 
right? Like, and, and it just goes back to like, for example, obviously Johnny Depp's case, which was defamation, right? Everybody went into it immediately defending Amber Heard. The whole expectation was this was going to be a pro Amber Heard move, right? She was going to come out on top. But then as a case actually happened, everyone came to way as pro Johnny Depp because they realized, wait a minute, this woman's crazy and actually awful. When, I, I mean, I was pro Johnny Depp because I love Johnny Depp, but I'm saying that to say that people, I'm not saying that people are going to change their mind on Diddy throughout this case. But what I'm saying is you have to take into account this various degrees of things. Um, and I'll feel, obviously that, that case was not a criminal case, so it's a little bit different. But this is a criminal case, and there's various degrees of guilt, right? So if I, I don't know, I don't want to give an example, but you understand what I'm saying. He said it. I just think people need to account for that. It, it, it's, not as, it's not as deep as people are making it seem. But the system says you're innocent until proven guilty, and it's sort of a shame that he's in jail. And what if he's vindicated? What if he's acquitted? Then he, how do you ever give him back? Those few months of incarceration. So a few months versus falsely imprisoned for the rest of your life? Like, come on, bro. Just a lot of things going on here. Let's talk about that bail because it was denied. And which I have a theory. The reason why he's saying that is because he's a lawyer. Of course he's going to say that. That's how he gets new clients. I twice. So Diddy has been in jail for almost a month now at this point, three to four weeks. That's quite a long time and quite a far cry from what he's used to. But that bail denial, both of the judges mentioned that he has some major resources, that he could flee because he has the money, access to private jets, thing like, things like that. Do you think that's a valid argument that these judges are making, that he could just flee and run away? I mean, it's a legitimate concern. You know, no judge wants to wake up and read the headlines the next day. Oh, they treated this guy special and they gave him bond and now he's gone and he fled from justice. So that's what's in the back of most judges' minds. On the other hand, you know, we, we deal with cases where clients have significant funds sometimes. And sometimes where there's money, you can craft a unique solution. You know, the, years ago, it was the ankle bracelet. The ankle he's, he's giving these lawyer answers. He's trying so hard to get new clients. He's trying to get more money. He's over here marketing himself. Like, yes, technically, there is clients who had a lot of money who ended up staying in the country. But nowadays with social media, I think it's people are going to be more likely to flee just because they ain't number coming back from it. Come monitor that if you had money to afford $250 a month for the process and the technical details, you could do that. And I can't imagine there wasn't some extreme unique situation where they could pay for private security guards to monitor, to report, you know, it's just interesting to me that with all the money he has and all the resources he has, they couldn't craft some solution that lets him be under some form of house arrest. And again, it sounds like special treatment, but the truth of the matter is to incarcerate somebody like him is expensive to all of us. We're taxpayers, and he's got to have unique situations. You can't put him in general population where, you know, everyone wants a piece of him and everyone wants to be his friend and everyone. So maybe some solution where his money could help us craft. I mean, he could build his separate jail cell. You know, and this dude is actually clowning right now. This dude is actually clowning right now. This dude's actually a clown. This dude wants us to treat him like El Chop, like uh, uh, Pablo Escobar. How about, how about he could have built his own jail, have his own, he could have his own pool, his own pool tables, his own casino inside the jail so he can serve his sentence the way he did. We can find a mutual common ground about putting him in prison or holding him for as long as we can. Yeah, like, what the, what is this? Is this Pablo Escobar? Like, what? This dude's trolling. And we could keep him there. Um, just interesting to me that they sort of said, nope, you're going to be treated not like everybody else, but a lot like everybody else. Um, just, you know, having money doesn't do it. So I wouldn't want to be those judges. There's sort of a no-win situation for the judge. And it sounds like they're erring on the side of caution. We're going to do what we would do for anybody else, which is keep him incarcerated for fear he flees. And then it's on us, you know, this guilty person who may, or this potentially guilty person gets to go on and live their life because the judge let them have bond. You know, if like I said, if, if the case comes to case or like the, 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 
if it comes down to it, if I was in this situation, I would take the few months in jail over, you know, being getting bonded and then being even more false. Like it dealt well. It not. I don't. I hate jail. I would never want to go to jail. I'd take probably take bond too. But the re, the reality of the situation is, if he's not guilty, he will be not guilty. And if anything, it'll strengthen his case and even propel him to another status that has he's never achieved before, right? That no one else has really achieved on that kind of level. So it's in that way, I'm trying to say I'm all over the place this video because I kind of, when I heard that he was going to get bail, I was like, there's no way. And then a lot of the, seeing the conversation online kind of made me like skeptical of what was, what was going to be said. But I just think that he has more to gain by remaining in jail and then being proven innocent than being on bonds and then being proven innocent. It flips from he's a bad person to now the judge made a mistake. That's what judges don't want. Just to play devil's advocate for a second, if we're going back in the timeline of Diddy, there were federal raids performed on his home back in March. So obviously he knew about it then. He could infer, okay, they're going to investigate something. And speaking with his legal team, he again could infer charges could be coming down the line. So if Diddy was going to run, he had all the time in the world, six months between those raids and then when he was indicted, to run. I mean, is that something that his defense highlight defense could highlight and say, hey, he could have left but didn't? I think you should practice law because that's an excellent argument. I think it's a 100% it's a correct argument, which is he had the opportunity to flee, except that sometimes people don't think rationally. Some pe people that are in power <coughs> often think, you know, I can get away with this, I can get away with this, and then when they finally realize they can't get away with it is when they try to look at other options. So, yeah. yes, it's a good argument that he had all the time in the world to try to get away. If he knew this was coming, he should have seen it, and he didn't run. Um, that's taking the, the the approach that we're going to trust people, and unfortunately, and I and I think too that I think people need to also realize if so if he would have ran, it would have been easy to just seize everything that he has. I, I think the government could have easily just froze everything seized everything and it would have been yeah like there was there would be no fight at that point it was just everything that was left behind will be his because again he had he would have to flee the country if you're wondering he would have to l physically leave the u.s and wouldn't be able to return until that was all handled but if he fled he he, he couldn't well, they decide on whether he's guilty or innocent or takes a plea um but yes that that's the argument i'd be making if i was his defense lawyer you know, what are you afraid of? He could have left a hundred times and he didn't. And he will give you any safeguards you want. And he'll pay for the safeguards, even though he shouldn't have to. He'll pay whatever it takes so that he doesn't have to be in jail because he's innocent right now. His defense team did bring a interesting bail package, kind of what you're talking about, a GPS monitor so that people could know where he was, a restriction on the people who could come visit him, specifically women. Um, a lot of people were going to co-sign on this, and it was going to be $50 million, and this was denied two times. But now there may be a win for Diddy, potentially, that a new judge has been assigned to the case. Do you think it's possible now that this new judge reconsiders and takes the defense up on this giant bail package? Well, Sierra, anything's possible, right? But now this judge has an even harder time, I think, because the past judge locked him up, didn't let him out, and he's still there available for trial. If the new judge lets him out on bond and something goes wrong, you know, and this isn't the analysis that I'm proud to make, right? We shouldn't be saying, well, judges are worried about their own skin and how they look if, if something bad happens. You should see some of the cases of people who were um, committed, like, actual murders uh, given bond. Like, there was just one the other day. Um, or the, where someone commits a murder, and then they're given, um, they're released for some reason, just because... Because of, uh, oh, well, you know, they're this minority group or, oh, they were this young. Um, let's just let them out because we don't ruin their life. But it's like they literally killed somebody. And we have video evidence of it. That's actually kind of crazy, you know? And then it's like, it's not, it's not, one, it's not justice, but two, it's like, okay, so what about the family who, the, of the victim? Is that just not, it's just weird happens 
Um, and maybe this new judge has a broader view and says, you know what? If he's willing to part, with, and, and, and again, I don't think the money's the issue. You know, $50 million is a high bond, but it's not a question of how bad was the crime. The bond issue is what is the likelihood that this person would avoid trial and skip town and forfeit their bond? Most people would rather go to trial than give up $100,000. But he has apparently has the money and the wherewithal to say, if there's a chance I'm going to jail for the rest of my life, they can keep the $50 million. I'm going to some country where they can't extradite me. So the amount of money is really not as, as telling as. But also, again, if he fled, they would immediately seize everything. He would lose more than he would ever gain. I mean, he'd have his freedom, but he would lose everything else. But also, I think it's not about the fleeing. It's about the witness tampering. If I want to fuck up the t case, I'd want to stay in the, in the States and mess with the witnesses. The fact that. All these other accommodations, they can't find one that secures the judge in his mind or her mind that, okay, he's not going to be able to leave town with those restrictions in place. I'm comfortable. But, you know, at least the, the lawyers know what's been turned down before, and they're getting another crack at it. You never know. So we talked about the potential for bail. and That's a cool shirt. I hate that it's the Spurs, though. <sighs> Making my Spurs look bad, man. We'll see if this new judge actually allows that. But for now, Diddy is behind bars at MDC, this Metropolitan Detention Center in Brooklyn. And his team has brought up some concerns about this place. I mean, by all accounts, it's not a great place to be. Not that any jail is, but the conditions sound a little bit worse than maybe other jails out there. Do you think if he isn't granted bail, his team could still say, hey, let's transfer him to a new one? I think, if anything, they should just transfer him. One ahead of the trial. They're going to try everything. They're going to try to transfer him. They're going to try to get him out. You know, in a normal case where it's a high-profile person or a well-funded person, the prosecution and the judge is a little bit more concerned about a wrongful prosecution because people that are mad that they're being arrested for a crime they didn't commit can turn around and file for malicious prosecution. It sounds like there's enough evidence there that they can argue with a straight face that we had a basis to go forward, right? There's so many people coming out of the woodwork um, that no one's going to say that they were malicious about this. They went after him without any evidence, without any basis for it whatsoever. Um, but certainly there are things that can be done, you know, but the truth is every jail is bad and some jails are worse than others. That's true. Every jail is bad. And that's why if you're thinking about committing crime, you should really think about that. Others. And the problem again is if you move him, why is he getting special treatment? And, and maybe he's earned special treatment. Maybe what he's done, maybe he's given so much back to his fans and to the world and to charity that maybe he's gotten the key to the city. I'm surprised he hasn't got anything special. There's a way that it plays out in the end. But again, to go into court and say this jail is bad, move him to another jail, is not your first argument. That's sort of the everything else failed. Judge, let me at least earn my keep and get something better for my client than this horrible place that he's in. And they are going to be saying it over and over and over. Innocent till proven guilty. You're putting an innocent man not just in jail, but in a place that's not just a holding place. It's a place that's terrible, especially for him, but for anybody. Right now, Diddy is in a protective care unit of this jail because he is a high-profile name. What do you think, though? If he was moved to general population, would he actually be at any sort of risk? Oh, 100%. There's no way. They can't move him to general population. And... Would he be at risk? Sure, he'd be at risk. There's so many people that have nothing to lose, right? They're going to be in jail the rest of their life. They've got nothing to, they want their 15 minutes of fame. They they were friends with Diddy or they hurt Diddy or they killed Diddy or they did. I mean, there's so many, you know, people in jail that would, this would be their moment. You can't put them there. Plus, do you want to be the judge that makes the decision or the prosecutor that makes the decision or the law enforcement officer or the warden that makes the decision to move him out of isolation and into a unit where there are other people and then something bad happens. Can you spell lawsuit? I mean, that person, aside from all the public anger and anxiety, I mean, clearly there'd be a lawsuit against the person for doing that. And they'd have to defend themselves. Even if they win, lawsuits are expensive, they're costly, get you the kind of media. Thing. Yeah, and especially since it's, God, I'm kind of, why are my ears itchy? I think my allergies are crazy today. No, um, I also think it's just because it's like, this guy has a lot of money and the people around him have money. If they really messed it up, it's not going to be like, you know, it's, he's making it seem like it's, it's a, it's bad. Maybe it's just the way he's talking, but it's going to be much, 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 much worse if it ends up being that he is innocent.
and they put him in the general population because he has so much wealth and power. Attention you don't want. I, I just don't see how they put him in with general population or, or other inmates at all. Obviously, Diddy wants to leave jail because it's not a desirable place to go. But as he's preparing for a future trial because he has pleaded not guilty to these charges, does him being behind bars make things a bit more difficult? Because his defense can't just drop over to his house or he can't FaceTime them with more info. It kind of adds a layer there of difficulty. Yeah, logistics are, are important. I mean, it's very hard to work with a client who's in jail to try to help them prepare for their own defense. You're always worried about people overhearing things. You've got to schedule it. The lawyer's got to get through the security mechanisms to get into the jail. You don't want to trust the telephone line, so you've got to be in person. Much easier to prepare your own defense. And there was a case you may recall, the Young Thug case in Georgia, where the lawyer actually got held in contempt and put in jail. He said, I want to be in the cell. I want to be in there with my client so we can at least be preparing together. You know, there's something about... That whole tr trial was crazy. I wish I would have like covered it because it was so bafflingly crazy. Like it was just so crazy and ridiculous. It's that's the best way to describe it. it. It they should make a TV show on that. It's it's almost it's if it was a, if it was a TV show, everyone would be like, man, this show was really well written. <laughs> like yeah. being able to prepare, and, and why should the client, the innocent until proven guilty defendant? have to prepare on the state's terms. You know, if you're going to prepare a defense, you should be able to do it where it's best for you, where it's most comfortable for you. Um, and that is a big hiccup. And I don't know that, that it's an appealable issue because you've got two competing claims. One is the right to a proper defense, but also you've got to make sure that the person doesn't escape justice. So, um, but certainly that's another argument. argument that uh, just give this, just give, give, he already has a special room. Just give the lawyer more access than he would otherwise. The lawyers are going to make um, even if it's just a furlough, even if it's just some time out of jail for the ability to prepare his own defense, um, that's maybe an option they're going to come up with. Maybe there's some hybrid um, compromise result for the new bail hearing. You also mentioned phone calls and phone lines, which got me thinking, because oftentimes in cases, we do hear in court some recorded jail phone calls, whether it's with the family members or a friend, someone, and there could be some sort of incriminating information that was revealed on these phone calls. Or we also hear about a cellmate or someone in jail who... There's always a cellmate that says the, the thing everybody, or the, 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 the federal government needs to hear. Uh, I'll, I am not a big fan of that, going to be honest, but just because there's so many instances of where it's like, okay, how convenient. Overheard or read a diary, things like that. So do you think the prosecution is going to be keeping a close eye on Diddy while he's behind bars to see if there's anything that could help their case? Absolutely. And people, as careful as they are, often let things slip. They might say, I can't really talk because I'm on a recorded line, but I want you to know, you know, whatever he says. Uh, is dangerous. And if I, I was his lawyer, I'd say, you don't talk on the phone, much less talk about your case or your situation. It, it's just dangerous, dangerous, dangerous to do that. Um, you know, even, and, and he should be able to talk privately to his counsel. To yeah, be able to he say, should. No, it might look like I did something wrong because I was in this place at this time. Well, if he doesn't testify, the prosecution would never know that. If they overhear that, if he has to say it through a phone line that could be recorded, uh, it, it just, it's putting a real, you know, I get what they're saying. God, this video is dragging longer than it needs to. This guy's just, I'll be honest, this video is not as good as I thought it would be. Mostly because of the lawyers. Just, he's just yapping, bro. He's just, and they're also repeating the same things over and over again because I'm catching myself doing that. Um, I, I think I'm just going to cut it here soon. But the reality is, at the end of the day, it's not a race issue. It's not a money issue. It's not a... It's not that deep and the reason why he's not getting bail. It's just as much as like the flo whole fleeing thing, I don't think he would flee. The whole point of somebody like this whose trial is is based on crimes of him manipulating people, not fleeing, manipulating people, needs they need to be able to make sure he doesn't witness tamper or at least drop the the likelihood of that happening, right? Release the pers the probability of that happening that's the real issue here and if he gets bail that is going to be i mean maybe i want him to get bail because the content's going to be crazy the videos are going to be fire the conversations on this channel are going to be fire but 
I just, I think whatever happens, we need the names of the people that were involved with this. We can't have another situation with the Epstein list. We all know, we LeBron LeBron James of the Los Angeles Lakers was he there and why is the NBA protecting him? Anyway, I'll check you on the next one. Bye bye.